Well, hey, entrepreneurs, we want to make sure that you are making the most out of your Instagram account. So today we're joined by author J.M. Sullivan. We're going to be taking a look at her Instagram account and seeing what tweaks she can make to make it a little more actionable, a little more engaging and what you can do as well. J.M., how are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm really excited to take a look at your Instagram account today. And I know you are a young adult fiction author, so you've got a lot of really great fans. And we're just going to kind of scroll through to see what you've got here. I do have my phone up. And I want to take a look at some of the things that we can tweak a little bit on your account. So the first thing I want to look at is your caption. So let's see what you've actually been doing recently. Uh, you posted a really cute picture with cookies, which I love, and books. As an author, you are representing your books, or as an entrepreneur, you're representing your business. So this is a great way to show off your products. Um, your caption says, some of my favorite cookies, chocolate chips. Some of my favorite people, my writing family at Bleeding Ink Publishing. Shout out to y'all for being the mostest. Uh, and then you go on to talk a little bit about your authors as well. So. As someone coming into your account and looking at this, I love that it starts with a question, but it's a question directed to you as opposed to the audience. So with this, you've got a really great shout out for your people. What I'm not seeing is the ability to engage. So as somebody coming into it, I would want to see that first question, ask me what my favorite cookie was, and then tell me what yours is. Mm -hmm. So I would love for you to start out with what's your favorite cookie? What's my favorite cookie? My favorite is chocolate chip. And that would give me an open door to respond to that. Right now as it is, it's good that I'm learning about you. And then there is a question mark there, but it's not directed to me. So I would tweak that just a little bit in the future to get those responses back to you. Now, continuing on, you've got a throwback to your blonde days. Super cute, by the way. But I'm also not seeing a question here. So how do you think we could maybe twist this a little bit to get people to respond to this and leave a comment? Um, maybe asking if they've ever had any fun hair adventures, if they've ever dyed their hair. Yeah. That would be perfect. That'd be a great introduction. I would have that right up front because we know Instagram likes to truncate those things. You only get so many characters before they collapse and you have to click see more to read the rest of the caption. So if you started off by saying, have you had any fun hair colors or have you had any fun hair adventures? Here's a throwback to the days when I was blonde. And I would even like to see a conversation about how you feel the differences are between your blonde look and your brunette look. That might be kind of fun within your captions and a good way to get people's attention. Um, and you're posting from what I'm seeing pretty dang consistently once a day, twice a day. You're getting those pictures out there, which is really good and really helpful. Um, you've got a question in this next one. It says, why are cats? <laughs> which is fun. But what? Well, how do I respond to that? So how could we tweak this one, do you think? Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is my question. Why Why are cats, I guess, why are cats the way they are? Um, what do you think my cats are plotting against me, maybe? Because I'm pretty sure they were trying to find my death just then. <laughs> that, okay, that would be a great caption if you flesh that out just a little bit. And you could actually ask for theories. So if you say, why are cats the way that they are? And then you give your theory about them plotting murder against you, that would be a great way to engage people. So what I'm seeing from you is a lot of captions that could have those questions in there to engage. Um, but I'm also noticing as we go through this, I'm seeing some books. You've got your books sporadically throughout your account, but you also have a lot of your kitty cats and it's not really promoting your business so much. So I would maybe tweak that. It's great to show off your cats. It's great to show off your life, uh, the fact that you're blonde, but maybe relates most of them back to your book. So with the cat caption if they were plotting your death maybe they were plotting your death while you were writing your book maybe there's some kind of tweak in there maybe I, you were writing your book and you noticed this and it kind of threw you off for the scene you were writing something to connect with it um i see that you've got a cat in paper towels stay safe stay at home that's cute. that's cute i like that i would then go on to say in your caption what you're doing while you're staying safe at home right which could potentially relate back to your book or plotting your book or reading a book, anything that has to do with the book community or the engagement or the um, industry that you are working in. You want to make sure it's engaging to that, right? So we kind of looked at your, your captions. Oh, I see that you've got your website on here. Nice. 
it's always good to show off some of your things and showing this kind of in real time what you're working on to build up your website is a really, really good way to connect with your fans and the people who are following you and show up. Hey, I've got this thing, but also, hey, I'm doing the behind the scenes thing. People love behind the scenes. So that's a really good one to get engagement on within your platform as well. So I do want to take a look at um, you've got one single highlight here that I'm noticing. I would either have a couple of highlights and I would probably focus on your products, the things that you do behind the scenes, any services you offer, um, or I would not have any just so it's consistent. Cause right now the one that you've got up here is not about your book. If you are going to be shouting out other people's books, put on books that you love. That would actually be a really great highlight reel. Say, Hey, if you like me, you'll also love my friend and their book, this my friend and this book and go through that. Um, or you can show like the behind the scenes of your books. You can show book trailers. I know you're getting into doing cookies and books. So it might be really fun to like do some books and cookies on your highlights there just to kind of show that off a little bit. Um, and we talk about how to do that over on our YouTube page, youtube.kmrobinson.com. Uh, I had to think about which one I was shouting out there. <laughs> but there's some really cool ways you can be doing the highlights as well. But I want to take a look at your links next. So with your links, you've actually got a link tree. And when we pull that up, it's got your website, it's got your social media, it's got your books, and uh, it's got a coffee link as well. So when we come here, what's the most important thing? What do you actually want people to see within your Instagram account? Where do you want them to go next? Where do you want them to take that action? Um, well, I kind of, well, I had it big because I kind of wanted to give them options because I am really active on Twitter. Um, really, that's probably like, if people want to talk to me, like in real time, that's probably the best place to go. Um, so if people are on Twitter, I'd love for them to go there, but I know a lot of people also don't have Twitter. So I really just want people to be able to connect with me. So that's kind of what I, my thought was, um, give them kind of all the options that they could go to connect with me. Um, obviously I'd like for them to go check out my books, but I also am real bad and I don't like being super pushy either so I don't want it to be like buy my books because that's really not what my social media presence is about like I mean obviously no, I should be able to buy my books but I'm more about connecting so I don't want it to be like front and center buy my books I'd rather them know places that they could go to connect me with me so that was my thought I guess. and I agree with that I think it's really important to form that connection rather than buy my stuff buy my stuff and for the other entrepreneurs watching you do want to make sure you're selling things, but you also want to send people somewhere where they can foster that relationship with you and you can really build up that community so that they are prepared to buy when it comes time. So with this, one of the things that I teach at Social Media for Bosses is that you should not be giving them a ton of links because when you give them a lot of choices like this, that comes with indecision. They don't know where to go next. And when they don't know the exact next step to take, most people won't take it. So it's great that we've got the website and the Twitter and the Instagram and the Facebook and the books and the coffee links. But if I come to this, I don't really know what my next step should be. So I tell people pick one really important location that's going to foster that community and send them there. Tell them to do that. Usually I recommend sending them to a newsletter because with social media, Things can disappear, they can miss posts, but with your newsletter, that always ends up in their inbox and it's going to be there unless they delete it. They can't miss it unless they actively delete it. So they'll always get your content as opposed to Twitter where they would miss it or uh, Facebook where they might miss things. So I always recommend going to a newsletter or to a freebie. So if you are giving away a free bonus scene or if you're giving away something that's going to foster that relationship with you, if you are an entrepreneur and you're giving away a PDF or an ebook or you're giving away a checklist or a cheat sheet, this is where you would be sending them because that's the next step to getting them to buy your product or your service. So I would recommend wherever you want them to go next, that's the one single place that you send them. And then you can shout out all the rest of these things within your posts. So you just showed off your website, which is super cute, super pretty, and you want people to go over there. So that would be an opportunity to say, hey, I've got a website, I've got some cool content on there, maybe you should go check that out. 
And I know you actually run a game over on Twitter. Would you like people to come play with you? So maybe once or twice a month, you're shouting that out in your captions as well. And you're saying, hey guys, we've got a game tonight. This is our topic. We would love for you to come join us over on our Twitter. So you can shout out these other locations that foster that connection in that community through your captions and through your posts, but in your link have one very direct specific thing that is going to show them how to do this within their business or within your business where you want them to go next as I accidentally hit buttons and pull up the wrong thing. There we go. I got it. I got it. We're good. Um, but I would definitely send them to the next step. In your case, I would recommend a newsletter. I would recommend a bonus scene. I would recommend a free book, something where they can get their teeth into your content and get to know who you are and then maybe decide to buy your books and come hang out in your community as well. Okay, so now that we've looked at your link, we need to look at your biography. The very first thing you've got is retelling writer. You've done this right. This is the most important thing. You are telling exactly what you are, but not just what you are, specifically what you are. You are a retellings writer. You could clarify that even more by saying you're a young adult or a YA retelling writer, but you've got it covered. You are a retellings writer writer. They know what you are. You could potentially say you're sci-fi. You could potentially say you're fantasy. You could narrow that down so it's hyper specific. And when they see that, they're going to say, oh, I really like that genre. I really like that industry. I really like that niche. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to see if I like this person. So the more you can narrow it down, the better. But the fact that you've got retelling writer right up front, that is absolutely key. Now you go on to kind of say sparkle enthusiast and coffee dependent, which not necessarily the most important to have in here and would be something I would recommend doing through your captions, through your photos that you're putting up there, through your videos, your live streams, your Instagram stories, all those fun, fabulous things. Um, because right here, it just kind of takes up space. And what exactly does that mean? Sparkle enthusiast. Okay, we have to think that through that that kind of takes some time, a little time to process might be hindering you just a little bit coffee dependent. Nice, but maybe I want to see lots of pictures of coffee in your posts. Maybe that's the way to let me know that you are 100% running on coffee, which I know that you do. <laughs> Going on from there, you specifically call out what you have created, the Wonderland Chronicles and the Neverland Transmissions, which P.S. guys, Alice and Zombies, we've got Peter Pan in space, like check them out. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But this is going to be really important because you're very clearly saying what you've got there. So I would get rid of the sparkle enthusiast and the coffee dependent, and I would go from retellings writer right into what you create. And then I would use the last half of your biography to tell them where you want them to go. So if you're sending them to your newsletter, you want to say, jump into my newsletter to get this freebie. Or if you're giving out a bonus scene, say, if you want to learn more, if you want the prequel novella, if you want my free book, click on this link right here and you will see or have access to that to get to know me a little bit better. Um, and then you are making sure you're giving them that call to action, the next step to take. Is it to go to that link and check that thing out? Is it to send you a DM? Is it to join you on Twitter? Let them know what you want them to do next. So overview for this, you're doing good with your posting schedule. You're getting your posts out there frequently, which is getting engagement. And that's really good. And that's really helpful for fostering connection to your people. Your biography is almost there. I would tweak it just a little bit so it's a little bit more actionable. I would cut down on your links to make sure you've got one direction for them to do it because when you tell them one thing to do, they're much more likely to do it than to go to all the other places and then use those other places within your captions and within your posts to make sure you're doing that. Uh, and then I would get a little more specific on how you're connecting some of your photos to your author life. You always wanna make sure you're bringing it back, whether you're saying, oh, my character Alice would love my cat because of this reason, um, or you know, what, what are you doing in quarantine? I'm writing books, or my character is doing this while in quarantine, that kind of a thing. You are bringing that back into it so that it's all connected. I'm seeing you're doing some doodles as well. This could be a great way to connect with your fans and say, I doodled this in between writing this scene and this scene, or I created this when I needed a break from writing. Some way of connecting that um, and I am seeing your color scheme is very consistent. So that's very good. That's a great way of uh, making that pop within your Instagram as well. But those are kind of my overall takeaways from this. How you feeling? All right. I thought it was going to be a lot worse. So I'm actually pretty happy. <laughs> 
you're doing good. You just have to make a couple of tweaks. You've got a lot of fans. They're all hanging out with you, but you need a little bit more to make them engage with you. So right now they're viewing your content, but they're not engaging with your content quite as much. So you can make a couple simple tweaks with those questions and with the direction you're putting it in and you'll be good to go. I wouldn't even say that you necessarily have to change the photos that you're posting, just relate it just a little bit more to your business to connect it and get them to engage and ask those questions. I think that's the biggest thing you need to work on is to get those questions in there so that you can get people talking back to you. Perfect. All right, before I let you go, let's learn just a little bit more about your business. So you are a YA or a young adult author who does retellings and you've got some books out. Tell us about them. Yes, so Alice, um, or The Wonderland Chronicles is a series. It's um, basically, you said Alice in Zombies. Um, Alice Carroll is a 16 year old girl whose sister has contracted the Momrath Plague. And so she needs to find a cure or she's going to turn into a Momrath. And so Alice goes to Wonderland to save her. And then my most recent is Second Star, which is Peter Pan in space. Oh, I'm trying to like put it in the screen. Um, and this is <laughs> Captain Wendy Darling. Um, she becomes the captain of um, the London Year Brigade and they get a mysterious transmission from her long lost hero, James Hook, and they have to go to Neverland to save him. So they're fun. And I've read them. I highly recommend them. Make sure you guys are checking them out and make sure you are connecting with, oh, I did it the wrong way. Make sure you're connecting with J.M. Sullivan on Instagram oh, and all the social media platforms. I was so close. Um, and make sure you're leaving some love over on her captions, on her comments, on the things that she is posting, because we want to support each other. And if you've got questions about how to up your game on Instagram, get in my comments right now, send those over to me because we're continuing our Instagram hack series to make sure you're leveling up while we're all stuck in quarantine to make sure you are creating a profitable business through smart social media marketing. We've got a hashtag guide at hashtag.kmrobinson.com to help you level up your hashtag game and prevent prevent you from using the number one offending hashtag you're almost definitely using that's killing your reach and what to use instead. Hashtag kmrobinson.com uh, or drop me a line down in my comments and I will drop that for you as well. And if you want to have your Instagram critiqued, let me know. I'm getting a couple of people on air to actually be doing this with us for free instead of a paid consultation. So if you want to be one of them, hit me up down below. I would love to have you on and see how we can tweak your Instagram account. Make sure you hit the subscribe and notification bell because we are going to be continuing our Instagram hack series bonus content over the next couple of days and you do not want to miss out. Thanks all for joining us. We cannot wait to see you in the next video, Jam. Thanks so much for being brave and coming on air with me to go over your Instagram account. I cannot wait to see what you're going to do over the next couple of days. Thank you for having me. It's always fun chatting with you, Katie. <laughs> All right. Have a great day and we will see you in the next video, friends. Bye-bye.